Y'all want to take a look under the fire truck? I do. And we'll try to figure out what is what and what kind of condition this thing's in. So, for the most part, our drains are working. I haven't touched this one, but I replaced this one. And so that drain's working, so we can at least get the air or the water out of the tank. Um, I will probably replace this one because um, I don't think it's going to open up. I actually bought two new ones, and so I might just put, the, put this one back on my other little tank that I took it off of and put the two new ones on here so they match. It's a little different design. So there's a... Uh, I don't know what this fitting originally was. I don't know if it's just to let the air out of the tank, but it's there. Don't really know. Um, from our checking, it looks like these regulators are leaking when we did check everything. I have not done anything with them yet. Um, they're on the small leak. So here we've got our uh, PTO and running off of the PTO is another pump. Now, from what I can tell, and I do have some um, documentation on this thing, uh, what I can tell is that this is a, um, it's a pump for the foam system. And what this thing will do is you can use it to draft foam out of a container. So if you don't have foam in the tank and you're hooked up and you're and you got a big container of foam that's what this will do and it's got some valves up top so where you can set your i guess dilution of the foam because the foam is a foam water mixture and so you can um set you know how much foam you want basically um, sounds like I can hear a little bit of air leaking somewhere. We'll have to try to figure out where that's coming from. So here's the huge five-speed transmission. Um, I don't know what it is. I'm thinking it's probably a, uh, either a spicer or a fuller. Let's see. Let me get a rag. We'll wipe that off and see if we can tell. It's got a Dana tag on it. It's a Dana 5752C. So if anybody's got some information on that, just let me know. Looks like the drain plug may be leaking a little bit. We'll have to check that out and we'll check the fluid level. Otherwise, it looks pretty good shape. Um, bottom of the engine looks decent um you can see there's a lot of rust on the oil pan but uh we can take care of that you can see the delco remy starter up there uh there's the big oil filter i need to measure that it's probably going to be the bigger filter um if you're not familiar with um uh two-stroke detroits these are the slobber called slobber hole slobber uh tubes um i guess that's not the technical name uh technical name is probably the air box drains but um yeah they go up there and they drain excess moisture and oil out of the air boxes um not too oily really underneath uh, this thing i've had it sitting in the driveway the only drips it does is it it'll drip a couple drips out of the uh, tubes here that's not bad for a detroit this thing like i said it's only got eleven thousand miles so coming up to the frame you can see it is a, a double stacked uh frame and i'm not sure if they were all made like this but going up top it's got a double thickness up top and then it doesn't double thick on the bottom um 
it's single thickness down here. The double plating stops right there. Um, it looks in good shape. Uh, this thing has been down south all its life. I mean, it's got rust on it just from age, but it hasn't seen salt or anything. So, you know, we're, we're lucky there. Um, big, thick leaves on the front. Um, I don't know if we could find any markings on this front axle. Uh, can't tell. Uh, it's got power steering right there and it is the steering is tight on it there's not a lot of play in it so that's great uh, like I said 11,000 miles so a lot of wiring we need to work work on we're gonna probably try to eliminate a lot of this mess of wiring and try to make it see what goes where and what's necessary what's not necessary and try to clean up this because it's had you know a lot of different people over the years uh, put wires where they shouldn't be I guess you know we got just lots of wiring lots and lots of wiring to clean up all right let's uh, see if I can get over to the other side uh, fuel tank We'll get our camera down in it one day and take a look real good. Uh, it looks like transmission could be leaking a little bit right there, or it could be from that drain plug and it's just coming around. I don't know. Uh, this side of the engine uh, looks good. It looks like a grease dessert right there. I'm not sure what that would be for. Um, and we got, is that the oil pressure sensor right there? Right there in the middle? Probably so. We'll need to test that and see. Uh, it's probably the gauge that's the issue, but we'll check that out. Uh, got some coolant drains right there. Uh, looks like, uh, yeah. Another shot of the starter from this side big thick battery cable right there that must be a ground um, and not much to see up front I don't think I'll scoot up under there there's a the quick release valve for the front brakes uh, most of the airlines look like they're in pretty good shape on this thing that up there I need to check those those look a little old Let's see where they go to. Uh, those may not be airlines. Those may go over to the, those could be fuel. I don't know. I think the compressor on this thing is on the back of the engine. I'm not positive, but I think looking up through there, I think uh, that thing right there is the compressor, part of the compressor. See, it's got a line going in from the side. I think that's that's it. Not positive, but I think it is. There's the top of the transmission. You can see under the cab. This part, these parts of the cab look pretty good. It's the the floorboards that are bad. You can see back there some rust. We got a lot of lines going in. Um. Yeah. Looks like this cover, oh no, the output seal is leaking on the transmission. We'll have to address that. Shouldn't be too big of a job. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, should just be able to take the drive shaft off and, and uh, take this nut off and pull it out, replace that seal. So we'll use that. Uh, model number we got off the transmission to get that so um, there's the uh, engagement for the PTO and right there you'll see that is for the pump now we'll go back there and I'll show you the pump 
And if y'all are familiar with any of this stuff, you probably know more about this than I do. I've got a little bit of a manual on this thing that was in the glove box that I've kind of, I haven't read completely through it, but I've kind of skimmed through it. And that's how I knew what this was, or I think I know what it is. So there's the engagement. And what that is, that's, um, it's gonna be for, uh, that'll disconnect the drive shaft and power the pump so that what I showed you under the cab uh, is for that. Oh, I don't know if I can get under right here. This, this pump hangs low. This thing doesn't look that great. No idea if it works or not. Let's see, it looks like it hasn't done anything in a long time. But we might try it one day. I, I don't know that I really need it because, uh, you know, I'm gonna run some water through this thing, but I'm not gonna run foam through it. And so I don't think that I need this, this pump, but it'll stay here. Um, so short drive shaft running to the pump. Like I said, you run this thing, you run the pump with the transmission in fifth gear. And then um, this disconnects the output. So right now it goes straight through input, output, straight through. And it, um, um, yeah. And then when you engage this, it disconnects the output here and engages the pump. Now that's the bottom side of the pump. And this pump is huge. And it doesn't look great right there, but I don't know. We'll have to try it one day, see if it works. The frame looks pretty good. Um, it's, it's double thick back here as well. Um, even with all this rust back here, there's no, uh, no signs of rust jacking or anything between it. This is where that tank is leaking. It's just been leaking all along the frame here. Uh, this is not, this is from water, you know, this, this side just staying wet, but it's, it's not pitted very bad. It's mostly uh, surface rust, just, it, it looks worse than it is. So we'll clean this up and paint it and keep it from getting any worse. And all up under here, this is a mess, but um, this pipe, you know, it looks rough, but it's mostly the same. It's mostly just surface rust. There's not any big pitting on it or anything. It's, uh, yeah. So it should all still be in good shape from what I can do. I mean, it's holding water right now. It's got water in it. Um, there's the drain and it is not draining at all um, so I got to fix that and get it to where it'll drain so I can get rid of this stuff uh, this water that's in the tank um, I got a little bit of it out by opening that lever right there and then um, opening this uh, lever over here I was able to get some water out but it's kind of slowed down. I think it's now plugged up with rust because it's barely coming out and there's still uh, water in the tank. So uh, I did check the oil in this thing. It looks great. No issues there. It's right at full and it looks nice and clean. Um, there's probably some kind of, uh, I would assume maybe somewhere to put oil in the pump. Not sure about that. Um, this, I'm not sure what this is. I thought it was some kind of a priming pump and it may be, but what's odd about it is there's a tank right here. And I don't know, it kind of looks like diesel in there, but maybe it's oil. Maybe it's some kind of oiler. I really don't know, but from what I can tell, following these lines, it looks like it's for priming. 
and I don't know what that is if that's some kind of a drain I really don't know or if it's supposed to be hooked up to something and it's not and then it has that line hooked up to it that goes to that tank so I don't know or maybe you put some kind of liquid in there that primes it I'm not sure on that but I don't know how you engage this either there's got to be a switch somewhere and I haven't found anything for it so not real sure um, y'all are going all kinds of upside down and stuff so I apologize uh, I'll try to get y'all right set up uh, drain lots of drains on this thing drain uh, lots of wiring that needs to be dealt with there's there's a plug on the back I guess for um, like a high amperage battery hookup on the back and I think that's what these heavy gauge cables go to more uh, airlines and it's a big airline and more wiring that needs to be dealt with uh, spring brakes on the rear um, that valve I think is in good shape spray those make sure they're not leaking I think that's some kind of coating somebody wrapped around it probably just to protect them I don't think that it was put on there to keep it from leaking or anything there's the big tank output I think that's some kind of a battery charger part of it not real sure there is I think a hookup in the back for a charger to plug it into 110 um, is that on the back? There's, I know there's one on the side. Um, air valve. Air valve. Uh, that one was leaking. I replaced two O-rings in it. Big honking rear differential. Um, this thing's got a 30,000 GVWR. Uh, I don't know where the tag would be on this thing. I'm curious to know what the gear ratio is but I, I really wish it um, had a little better top speed. 50, I wish it could go 65 instead of 55. But yeah, it tops out 55. Um, it's kind of oily. I need to probably check it. I'm sure it holds a few gallons of oil, but we definitely do need to check it. Uh, everything looks pretty good. This side of the frame looks a little better than the other side. The truck was leaning towards the driver driver's side, so um, that's the side that pretty much got the most water running on it from the rusted out tank. So, all right, let, let me uh, scoot out from under it. And oh, the pump is a hail. Well, I don't know if the pump's a hail, the pump drive is hail. We'll look and see what the pump itself says it is. Back side of the rear end here. Looks like we got a tag over there. Uh, I did check the pump itself as a hail as well. Uh, there's the rear drum brakes. Can't see inside to see what the brake shoes look like, but um, I bet they look pretty good with only 11,000 miles on them. Uh, look at these leaf packs. I mean, that is like probably eight inches of leaves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then if you count that one, twelve. Lots of leaves. Um, well, that's odd. I wonder if this has to do with that anti lock system it's got it's got wires running in there i went to do some research on that uh if you saw in the previous video i mentioned it's got a it's got a light that says anti-lock now i'm not I'm like almost positive that's probably not going to be 
like a anti-lock brake system like we're used to today but I'm just curious what that is um, let's see date code of 6 of 75 it's a Rockwell Model C one three one two one X one zero two. Is there a letter after that? After the two? Nope. One zero two. Um, so I don't know. You know, maybe that would tell you what axle ratio. Not sure. And I don't see a tag other than that. I could probably figure it out. 2800 RPMs. And I think fifth gear is probably going to be a one to one. And, or, and then 55 miles an hour. Well, about 2700 RPMs. So here's the back. Uh, the fish plating. Is it back here? Nope. Where did the fish plating stop? It stopped right before the spring hanger, it looks like. Yeah, you can see uh, the spring hanger is part of the fish plating. You can see it right there. So the fish plating goes through the rear or the front spring hanger, and then the rest of it is not fish plated. Look at that cross member. It is thick steel. Um, back little tow hook things that stick out through the back. Um, and then this is part of the back step. I would like to put a hitch on this thing to be able to pull a trailer like for parade or something. You know, if kids want to ride in the back for a parade, I'd like to do that. We'll probably come off of this plate here with a, um, probably the inside of it, with like some channel iron run into the back and uh, tie in there. It's welded inside of this here. I mean, this is, this is some thick stuff. It's a pretty thick plate there. So, well, uh, it's not going to be like pulling a heavy load or anything. So, let's, uh, what that is. Can't tell. Oh, that's those battery cables. I need to replace that plug. Oh, and there's the 110 plug uh, that goes up to that battery charger, I think. So, that's it. I mean... That's the whole underneath side of this truck. Uh, I guess real quick, we'll look up under the front. We can look at the front of the engine. Um, and I was curious if these are the old style. These definitely are the old style. So these are, um, can be dangerous. Um, so the these are fully rebuildable, which most of them nowadays are not. So this is your diaphragm side, and then that's going to be the spring brake side. So on the um, under, if you loosen that clamp up, that spring brake is going to, that spring is going to fly out with tons of force. So if you're on, if you're looking at one of these. And it's got the clamp on the spring side. You can see this is your your diaphragm side. It's the uh, actuator side. Uh, this is where you're, you could replace the diaphragm in it. And uh, but if you've got a clamp on that side of it, don't take that clamp off. Very dangerous. So uh, we'll 
I don't know. We'll check them and see if they're leaking at some point. All right, let's take a quick look up at the front. All right, can't see too much out the front. Um, front the engine. There's a belt here. I guess we could try to snake this thing out. It's just laying in the bottom here. Not sure why. I don't know if it threw it off one time and then they replaced it or what. It's got all the belts on it. Here's the um, quick release valve that had the dirt dauber uh, built in, completely plugging off the uh, exhaust. Full drain. Looks like the. Uh, we probably need to pull the um, airbox covers off because they're definitely leaking. Looks like. Replace those gaskets. So we'll probably do that at some point. Here's the exhaust. I didn't show you all. There's a big muffler right there. It exits out the passenger side. Uh, it does not have stacks or anything. Looks exhaust all looks stock. Big muffler. Oil drains. Um, look up that side. See the alternator way up there, up top. And the fan, uh, the way you adjust the fan on this thing, the fan physically goes up and down on its bracket and to adjust the tension on the belts. And that's pretty much it. Everything's greasable on this thing. I need to probably get a couple tubes of grease and get under this thing and just really go over everything really well. Um, it, uh, the steering is great on it. It doesn't really have any slop in the steering. The steering box is tight. Everything, I haven't got up under here and checked everything, but just by driving it, everything feels tight. Big flywheel cover. That's it. It looks pretty dry on this side. I don't think the airbox covers are leaking that bad on this side. Uh, that hose right there it looks a little wet, doesn't it? Or is it just oily? It might just be oily. I think that's oily. I think this is part of the block heater, maybe. It may power this. I think it does. Not sure. I can't read that. Not sure, but I think this this thing right here itself is I think a like a coolant circulation heater and I think what it does is it circulates water and heats it my guess I could be wrong it may not circulate it, it may just heat it but I know it's at least a heater all right I think that's that's it uh, this airline real quick yeah, it's decent. And the brake chamber on the on the front. All right, long video, but there's a lot to look at underneath this thing, so didn't want to leave anything off. So thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below. Hit the like button and subscribe for more.